thank you for um, all the viewers being with us today. Um, we really appreciate your presence. We want to discuss with you the workflow analysis and how it could help you in uh, your lab to optimize your operations. And today we are very happy and honored that we are two that we are having two special guests from Italy with us. It's Dr. Loren Lorenzo Ceruti and also Dr. Essa Silvia Gelsumini. And they really want to share with us their experience on how a workflow analysis was implemented in their lab and what the added value was. So with this, I would like to thank um, Dr. Ceruti and Dr. Essa Gelsumini for their presence with us today. And Dr. Sirutu, as a starting point, could you please, um, as an introductory question, briefly describe your hospital and your laboratory? Our hospital, Papa Giovanni XXIII, was inaugurated 2012, replacing the old hospital. For the eye specialization, the presence of the multidisciplinary teams, the complexity of the pathologists treated, and the local service it's able to welcome and support the patient and their families, ensuring high level of care at every stage of the disease. The annual volume of the activity of our laboratory is around 6 million tests. Thank you very much. Very, uh, very impressive and, and nice description of uh, the hospital and the laboratory. And I know from Italy that your hospital also has a very impressive amount of beds, certainly in emergency or intensive care. Is that correct that you are one of the biggest uh, in Europe or even Italy? Yes, the uh, 112 beds for the uh, um, unity care, the largest in Europe. Okay. Very nice. Now, one question we are today discussing workflow analysis and, and also uh, how that uh, optimize certain processes in your lab. What is your specific role in the laboratory? Could you describe and give the viewers a little bit of perspective on this? I am a doctor, medical doctor and the representative of the core lab area where I collaborate in the management of the routine activities of the whole analytical line and the resolution of the problem. I am the responsible of the coagulation section. While I'm a biologist and I've been working in this laboratory for two years, and I'm the manager about clinical chemistry, point of cares and quality laboratory system. But Peter, uh, if you prefer to call us uh, Silvia and Lorenzo, we think that this could be nice. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Silvia. Okay. Thank you, uh, Lorenzo. <laughs> that makes it also a little bit more um, easier for me. Thank you. Grazie. We also have the pleasure to have Dr. Essa Maria Rosa Bergami with us uh, on the call. So nowadays with all the Zoom or Teams, we can do multiple calls in this um, challenging COVID time. So Maria Rosa, thank you very much also for joining uh, with us. Um, I just wanted to say that you are a European expert in this topic of workflow analysis. And we really appreciate if you could give us some more background on the attendees who are listening, how a workflow analysis is conducted and what specific tools uh, you are using. Thank you, Peter. I am a biologist with more than 25 years experience in diagnostic lab. Four years ago, Byrad decided to create a new service for their customers to help them in their workflow routine. And this service is called Lab Insight. I joined so this team since the very beginning. Me and my colleague are certified Green Belt Lean Six Sigma. And we apply these two methodologies to analyze all the lab processes from the sample arrival to the result release. In this particular case of the workflow study in Bergamo, uh, we stayed two days in the lab observing the routine, mainly focus our attention to the QC use. Very good. And I think also very helpful uh, to understand that uh, the analysis is one thing, but at the end with the workflow analysis, you could also change practical um, 
process steps in your lab and in that way also optimize um, the process. Sylvia, you decided to run a workflow analysis in your lab, specifically on quality control. Um, now, I wanted to ask you, what have been the reasons uh, for you that you decided to, to start with this workflow analysis? Could you give some more background on this? Yes, well, you have to know that our laboratory adopted BioRed QC since uh, uh, 2016. But last year, um, we improved our core lab, uh, introducing the new Siemens instrument instrumentation called Atelica. At the time, the BioRed QC specialist proposed as a study in order to optimize and standardize the use of our QCs. Uh, you have to know that um, I am quite new in this laboratory and so I appreciated very much this kind of proposal. The workflow study has been very useful um, in the starting time because uh, when the laboratory is uh, getting start something new, this is a very useful tool uh, to, uh, to plan physically. Uh, the design of the new laboratory. In addition, as I said before, I am the quality system manager of this laboratory. So I have to guarantee the traceability of the process about our QC. And uh, so uh, defining and optimizing rules and uh, responsibilities. The take home message about the workflow is that uh, the patient safety, absolutely. And this today is very important. Thank you. And I think your message on, on patient safety is a very important one. We hear that also in a lot of laboratories around the world that bringing the patients in the central um, part of our operation and also optimizing the patient safety is a very important aspect where a lot of labs like your lab giving very good examples. Lorenzo, I wanted to come back uh, to you and ask this workflow analysis has been implemented in your lab. Could you share with us what are for you from your perspective the main outcomes of this process? For sure. The adoption of the IntelliQ BioRed controls and the extension of Uni Unity real-time software to all lab departments produced the greatest improvement in terms of manual activity, saving and cost for errors reduction, but uh, my colleague Silvia can tell you more. Thank you, Lorenzo. Uh, I think that IntelliQ controls uh, uh, were the keystone for our lab. You have to know that we daily perform at least 10,000 tests on our total lab automation, uh, tests about clinical chemistry and immunoassay for more than 120 different analyses. So we must have an efficient and secure QC plan. And when we started, uh, we were managing uh, a lot of number, a big number of uh, QC tubes and aliquots. And so spending uh, a lot of time, but most of all with the possibility, the real possibility to make error. Uh, in addition, uh, we were using Unity Real-Time, but we missed some important benefits of this software. Today it's totally different, because now we have a QC strategy that has been perfectly designed for the, our total lab automation. And we also improved our efficiency in QC data management. In fact, the data that Maria Rosa showed us after her uh, workflow study allowed us to know, to realize the complexity of the activities related to our QC process. Thank you very much. That's uh, very clear. And I think also for some people and viewers online who want to start with this workflow analysis, good feedback to learn on which parameters um, and what aspects that can be improved. You were also mentioning, and, and I read uh, that there were you were also able to reduce some manual steps and potential errors in the whole process. How did you approach this or how did you achieve this? The use of the load and go of the IntelliQ controls changes our scenario. These controls are ready to use. In barcode cube, automatically recognized by a Telic assistance. You just need to load and go. Maria Rosa has precise number to illustrate this improvement in our routine. 
So thanks to the adoption of BIRAD Intel EQ controls versus classical control in BIOS, we show that the customer um, reduce the manual activities of 54% and the cause for error of 84% and that was a great achievement. They also save about two hours per week for these manual activities. In addition, the lab was able to optimize resources, reducing the number of QC in use of 20% improving so this day's inventory. With the IntelliQ products that is used, what is for you uh, the most important? Is it the time or is it more reducing errors or is it a combination? Absolutely the combination, <laughs> absolutely the combination. Uh, we, uh, we know that after the workflow analysis, uh, we had uh, almost uh, half time uh, less than, than before. And this is very important because that time is uh, today is useful for other laboratory activities. And this is uh, fundamental because today we are not so much in a laboratory and this is a very common situation. So uh, this is a very useful aspect to consider. And uh, our, tech our technicians sorry, um, are not exposed to a, a chemical risk because they don't have to touch uh, this control. They are in tubes, they have a barcode, they normally usually are stored uh, inside the atelica. So uh, our technicians don't have to go to the fridge and uh, bring up uh, uh, these controls because they are always inside uh, the instrument. So our technicians, uh, according to us, obviously, um, program um, the time uh, of the of the control of the quality control, and so um, the instrument uh, starts automatically. And this is a very important adding value because uh, um, every technician doesn't have to um, manage to manage these uh, controls. They are ready. Uh, you don't have to do anything. You have just to be sure that they are inside, just inside uh, your uh, instrument. And that's all. And that's all. Then you have to go to the Unity uh, real-time uh, software. You have to open this software and watch uh, the results of your QCs. Okay, very good. Thank you. Silvia, you were also mentioning... Uh in your previous comments, the use of Unity real-time in, in the lab, and that it also helps you to improve the efficiency in the, the QC data management. Data management. Could you elaborate a little bit more on this and, and give your perspective how Unity um, could help there, the program? Unity is uh, uh, absolutely uh, useful because it guarantees the traceability of every operation, of every activity and uh, every operator because each of us has a login, uh, a personal login um, and this is absolutely sure because, for example, we extended the use of Unity real-time to other departments of our laboratory uh, for example, the uh, hematology total lab automation with its five instruments where we perform more than 1000 tests per day. This is because we introduced uh, the BioRed as a third part QC in this department to be more compliant uh, with the European standard NISO 15189. In addition, in this way, we may have an interlaboratory evaluation about our hematology systems because there are more than 100 peer labs. And this is absolutely an important adding value for us. We also learn how to use our QCs data in Unity real time to create uh, some instrumental alignment tables, uh, which are very useful and easy to compare twin instruments inside our laboratory, but not only for big instruments, but for um, point of cares too. 
you have to know that in this hospital we have something like more than 100 glucometers and this is a very useful and easy tool to monitor uh, constantly how do they perform we can control uh, how do they perform compared to our master glucometer. So this is a fundamental aspect about our, our point of care management. Okay, thank you. And, and what you say is certainly the ISO 15189 we see in a lot of countries in Europe and around the globe that it also driving um, the traceability and that certainly also unity uh, can help there. So that certainly is a very important topic. You mentioned before that also the QC strategy, the QC design was optimized or you could improve with the input from the workflow analysis this QC strategy. Could you give the viewers a little bit more perspective on, on how the workflow analysis helped you in this perspective from a QC strategy perspective? You have to know that uh, to optimize our QC design and patient risk management, we use the mission control software, which is working as an additional module of Unity Real Time. This software is able to calculate the risk management index RMI for every analyte, uh, and this in order to optimize its uh, uh, QC regarding to frequency and rules. Uh, the risk management index is a promising quality indicator because it quantifies the risk of each test based on the frequency of, the, of its request, the frequency of its QC and its probability of damage and go on suggesting frequency and Wesker rules suitable for the accepted risk level in order to reduce it. Maria Rosa, you could also go a little bit more in detail on the risk management index. Concerning the calculation of the RMI, the risk management index, I can say that we use several parameters that are automatically imported in mission control from Unity real-time software. So then these data are used to compute this um, RMI for each analyte, taking into account the performances of the system in use in the lab and the severity of harm in case of error of each parameter in order to define the acceptable risk. Okay, and now, Without going too much in detail, I wanted to ask to Silvia or to you, Maria Rosa, if we have an analyte and we calculating with mission control the risk management index, could you give one example what the outcome was and that what you maybe changed in the frequency of the QC or the rules? Is that an example you could share with us? We discovered that in some cases we were over controlling some analytes. For example, our troponin because its RMI um, was very, very low, less than 0.001. And this using the Wescal rule 1.3 combined with a desiderable total error. But we saw that changing, that raising the Wescal rule 1.3 to 1.4, Mm, the risk was the same due to the high performance uh, of our Atelica uh, instruments uh, systems. When we raise uh, the uh, Wescal rule 1.3 to 1.4, uh, obviously we can do, we can process less QC, but maintaining the same safety for the patient. And this is very useful not only for the patient but for the economy, the global economy of the laboratory, because uh, this uh, software helps us uh, in containing uh, the cost, in reducing the cost of our test. Okay, very good. And, and I certainly also understand that the patient risk management, as it's called, putting the patient in central point because that's also where we are doing it. So in that way, that also the risk to the patient can be... Uh, Minimize. Now, I think we discussed already a few topics like mission control, um, QC design, also the workflow analysis, and also the errors and the time. Now, if we are going back tomorrow to the lab, or some maybe some of the viewers are watching this um, testimonial from within the lab, Lorenzo or Silvia, could you give a kind of short summary or take home message of the main? experiences or the main things that you um, 
came or came out of this workflow analysis? According to me, the workflow analysis had a very positive impact on our laboratory QC process because it decreased the time spent in manipulating QCs and uh, um, improved the time regarding to the interpretation of our QC results. This approach helps the laboratory to effectively re uh, rationalize its QC process, allowing the implementation of the quality of our analysis, ensuring the final patient risk management. And I think that's a good um, take home message or last, uh, let's say, uh, sentence to always uh, with this kind of processes also bring the patient because that's all what's that's the reason why we are doing this work to also um, serve a good diagnosis or a good uh, treatment and that's very important that the patient is central uh, in this process so i would like to thank you mari rosa uh, silvia and lorenzo for the time spending with us today i know it's a very busy time for all of you it's it's a quite uh, certainly in the time frame we are um, very challenging, but we really appreciate uh, your time and presence with us. Grazie mille uh, for your uh, presence. So with this, I would also like uh, to conclude um, this little testimonial. I would like to thank all the viewers who are with us today. And we also hope that with this um, interview today, we could also inspire at least some of you to maybe think on what a workflow analysis and the broader perspective of the different processes and also the different steps could do in your lab. And maybe in the future also you could put some steps forward in op optimizing some of the processes. So thank you very much for your presence. Thank you also to the speakers of today. Thank you. Thank you so Bye. Much. Bye.